Hello, you're listening to Abstract AF and I'm Singha Jaswal. We are back with another edition of 10 book reviews under 10 minutes. This time the titles include a lot of interesting graphic novels, so let's get to number 1. Nectar in a Sieve by Kamla Markandeya. We've already taken a deep look at this Indian classic in episode 42, so we'll keep it really short. It's a rather dry story about an impoverished family and their struggles to raise a good crop and not die due to starvation. It sheds light into the mindset of simple folks living in rural India right after independence. And despite being hailed as a modern classic by some critics, I wouldn't really recommend it to anybody. Number two, The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. If you're active on social media book groups, you've probably already heard a lot of good things about this fantasy fiction novel. And here's the good news. It really is a sweet, heartwarming tale about a 40-something man falling in love with a peculiar bunch of magical orphans and their caretaker. Just don't expect a lot of romance and you will not be disappointed with this one. Number 3. 30 Days of Night This is actually a comic book series, and as the title suggests, it's a dark story about vampires. It is set in a fictional place called Barrow, where the sun does not rise for 30 days during winter. And a pack of vampires decide that it will serve as perfect feeding ground for them, as they don't have to hide during the day. While the artwork in the initial first few issues isn't great or impressive, even though the story is quite gripping and gets better over time. It's a pretty straightforward human versus vampire story, but with a lot of twists. Be prepared for a lot of blood, gore, and very little romance. Number four. This is another graphic novel series called Klaus by Grant Morrison, who reimagines the legend of Santa Claus, making him this really cool comic book superhero who gets into violent fights and has a soft spot for children. The story mixes magic, folklore, witchcraft, shamanism, religion, and basically a lot of interesting elements making the story an entertaining read. Readers would love how Morrison keeps the traditional spirit of Santa Claus alive and slowly incorporates all his trademark characteristics with his own clever twists. Number 5. Shirley Jackson's The Haunting of Hill House. And yes, if you were wondering, the popular Netflix series of the same name is loosely based on this horror novel. And believe me, the show and the book are very different. While there aren't a lot of supernatural things happening in Jackson's story, she manages to build a lot of dread within the reader's heart. You keep wondering what's going to happen next. The plot is about a professor who rents Hill House to find out if it really is haunted. A lot of strange things do happen in the house, but considering the kind of anticipation Shirley Jackson builds throughout the course of the story, the reader is left feeling a little underwhelmed with the climax. But otherwise, it's a great pick for horror enthusiasts. Number 6. Eva Goes Solo by Evangeline Neo This is a standalone graphic novel. It's like a comic book travelogue where the author recalls her stay in Japan as a student. Neo cleverly captures the exaggerated style of manga artists, making the book comical and fun to read. Now, Neo is a Singaporean who lived in Japan for a significant amount of time, so she's able to shed interesting insight on the Japanese way of living and what it's like to be a foreigner living in their land. Number 7. Spellbound by Bishak Som a graphic novel memoir but with a twist, because the author's life is recollected as Anjali, a cisgender Bengali-American woman. A lot of the novel deals with the author's relationship with their parents and their struggle to getting published for the first time. The artwork is clean, colourful and engaging. It's just that, and this might be just my personal evaluation of the book, but it feels like the author isn't as candid and open about themselves as other graphic novel memoirs can be. I'd rather recommend Funhouse by Alison Bechdel or Hey Kiddo by Jared J. Krasowska. Overall, Spellbound does have its charm, but I feel like it doesn't live up to its title and towards the end it gets a little boring. Moving on to number 8. It's called Remind by Jason Brubaker. Now this is a fantasy fiction series about a cat called Victuals that gets lost and then reappears washed up on the shore with a brain injury and the ability to talk much to the surprise of its owner. (laughs) This is just a very weird series that isn't as fun as it could be. 
It's about these lizard men and women living somewhere in a parallel world under the ocean. And I don't know, I just didn't have any fun reading it and I would not really recommend it to anybody. So let's just move on to number nine. It's called The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. This booker winning novel is an ordinary tale about a regular retired man called Tony who out of the blue finds out that his ex-girlfriend's mother has left him some money and a diary, even though it's been over 40 years since he saw any of them. But this diary belonged to his best friend who committed suicide when he was just 22. So this little twist in the tale in his retired life really forces Tony to look back into his past making him realize that things weren't as simple as he made it out to be. It's a great book about how fragile and unreliable our memories can be. I totally recommend it to those who don't mind reading a rather mundane tale with a powerful message at the end. And now to the final title of this episode, number 10. It's called I Think I Am In Friend Love With You by Yumi Sakugawa. This is an adorable illustrated book about deep, poignant, platonic friendships. Sakugawa shows what it feels like to be in friend love with someone through her simple and comic illustrations that'll leave you feeling warm and happy. If you have a close friend who you absolutely adore with all your heart, you must gift them this lovely little book. Well, that's a wrap on this episode. Those were 10 book reviews under 10 minutes. Talk to you in the next one. Thank you.